Okay. So we talked about the basic, I guess, points or five important points of the sine graph, uh, which are important in terms of how it's drawn. Now we're going to take that information and we're going to try to discover what happens when we have transformations given in a specific sine function. So this is very similar to the transformations we did in quadratics. It's just now translated into a sinusoidal function. So everything basically is the same. So we have our A, H, and K, okay? So that was for quadratics. In this case now, we're gonna be given in terms of sine, so we're gonna scratch this part out. The form that sine takes is y is equal to a times sine of x minus c plus d. So as you notice, a stays the same, a is a, c and d, h and k are now replaced with c and d. So a does the same thing. So a is your vertical stretch or compression. C is the same idea as H in quadratic. So your C tells you how many units you're shifting left or right. So for example, if we have X minus C, that means you're going right, shifting right. And if you have X plus C, that means you're shifting to the left. And last but not least, we have D, which is the same idea as K. This tells you how many units you're going up or down. So remember, your D refers to your axis of symmetry, so the equation of the axis. That's where the, where the sinusoidal function splits in the middle, and this happens at a horizontal line. So for example, when we have the basic function of y is equal to, or f of x is equal to sine of x, our equation of the axis is going to be 0, because this is where the graph splits into 2 equally. Okay, so the axis of symmetry is going to be our D. Okay, and remember our A is our amplitude. So our A is telling me from the axis of symmetry, how many units does it take for me to get to my maximum and my min? Okay, and C just tells us how many units we're, we're uh, going left or right. So this is the basic points for our sine function. So at zero, Sine of x is 0, at 90 degrees it's 1, 180 it's 0, 270 is negative 1, and 360 it is 0. So now, let's go step by step the transformations. So for example, we need to understand a vertical transformation. So we're going to have, we're going to use f of x equal to sine of x. So now, how does the function g of x is equal to sine x minus 3 transform the function of just regular sine x? So again, I'm going to draw my, my regular function sine x. So let me just make this a bit skinnier. So I have 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Okay, so I'm going to go my basic 90, 180, 270, Three sixty. So those are our five points. So we're going to start off by drawing just regular sine x using our blue pen. So at zero, it's zero. At ninety, it's one. At one eighty, it is zero. At two seventy, it is negative one. And at three sixty, it goes back to zero. So because I have a vertical translation over here because of sine x minus three. This tells me that my graph is going three units 
down. So I have to shift my original graph of sine x three units down. So we're going to start with our starting point, which is zero, zero. And if I go three units down, my transform graph is going to start at zero, negative three. Now I'm going to take my next point, which is 90 and one, which is over here. And I'm going to translate that three units down. So I go one, two, three. So my next point is going to be here. I do the same thing with 180. At 180, my y value is zero. So I'm going to translate it three units down. One, two, three. So it goes over here. And you're going to continue to do the same thing. So our new graph looks like this. So this would be g of x is equal to sine x minus 3. Okay, as you can see, all of my y values went down by 3 units because we have a vertical translation of 3 units down because of that negative 3 at the end. So how does the function change? My original function shifts three units down. Okay, what is my domain? So I said the domain of any sinusoidal function is x e r. My range, you're gonna write y e r, but there are restrictions. Remember, your highest point here is negative 2. And your lowest point is going to be negative 4. So you're going to write y in the middle, the highest number at the right, and the lowest number at the left. And then your inequalities are going to be the same. Oh, I messed that up. Remember, the more negative you get, the lower the number is. That was my mistake. So my highest number is negative two and my lowest number is negative four. So it's gonna be y e r such that y is less than negative two, less than or equal to negative two, but greater than or equal to negative four. Now my equation of the axis is going to change. So remember the equation of the axis, you take the highest number, add it by the lowest number and then divide it by two. So in this case, we're gonna take negative two plus negative four divided by two, which gives me negative six divided by two, which means the equation of the axis is going to be y is equal to negative three, okay? And this makes sense because if I draw a horizontal line, that's where my graph splits in half. Now the amplitude is how many units from my axis of symmetry does it take to get to the highest point and the lowest point? So from negative three to two, that is going to be one whole unit. From negative three to negative four, that is one unit. So my amplitude, so my A is going to be one. And my period, as per usual with the, uh, with the sine graph, is going to be 360 degrees. So now we just looked at a vertical translation up or down. Now, let's take a look if we have a horizontal translation. So again, we're gonna work with the same thing. I'm going to make my scale. So 90, 180, 270, 360. Actually, for the sake of this question, I'm gonna go up by 30s.
Okay. So again, we're going to draw our normal function with the blue pen. So 0, 0, 90 and 1, 180 and 0, 270 and negative 1, and 360 and 0. Okay, so remember my horizontal translation is opposite of what it seems, okay? So I have g of x equal to sine x, sine times x minus 60. Because it's x minus 60, I'm shifting to the right. So what this does is that my graph shifts 60 degrees to the right. So, when it comes to this, our starting point, so that means our x values are going to shift 60 degrees to the right. So, instead of starting at 0, 0, this time it's going to start at 60 and 0. And instead of being 90 and 1, it is going to be 150 and 1. And then you keep going and going. So the next point after 240 and 0 is going to be so 270 at 60 is 330 and negative 1. And then from 360 to 420, it's going to be 420 and 0. So this is what my transform function looks like. The red graph is g of x is equal to sine times x minus 60 degrees. So again, my domain stays the same, x, e, r. My range has to do with my highest and lowest y value. So again, my highest y value is positive 1. My lowest y value is negative 1. So y has to be greater than or equal to negative 1, but less than or equal to 1. My equation of the axis, because it was a horizontal translation, stays the same. So y is equal to 0. My amplitude is going to be 1, because nothing changed. It's not vertically compressed or stretched. And my period is still going to be 360 degrees. So if you wanted to as well, you can do this in mapping notation. So for example, we have our regular x and y values. So again, we have 0, 0, 90 and 1, 180 and 0, 270 and negative 1, and 360 and 0. So in this case, because we had a horizontal shift, only my x values are affected. So what this would look like in terms of mapping notation, my x values are shifting 60, un 60 degrees to the right, and my y values remain the same. So the first transform point, again, we're going to sub in our x's in for x. So if you sub in 0 for x, I get 0 plus 60, which is 60. And then I'm going to sub in my y's for my y, which gives me 0. And as you can see in our graph, that is what we got. The next one is going to be 90 plus 60, which is 150 and 1. If we go back, that is what we got as well. And then you keep going. So 180 plus 60 is 240 and 0. Then we get 330 and negative 1. And then we get 420 and 0, which is perfect, which is what we wanted the whole time. So you can do it with mapping notation, or you can just do it visually. So now the next one, we're going to have a combination of a horizontal shift and a horizontal and a vertical translation up or down. So I have sine x plus 45 plus 2. So this function shifts because it's x plus. 
shifts 45 degrees to the, to the left. And it is a vertical translation of two units up. So now let's again draw our regular sine function. So because of this, we are going to go up by 45. So hopefully I have enough space. So 45, 90, 135, 180, 225, 270. And then we're going to have negative 45 over here and zero, obviously. I'm going to have one, two, three, four. So the first one is going to be zero, zero. We're going to have 90 and one, 180 and zero, 270 and negative one. So that is our regular sine function. So now what we have to do is what we're doing is we need to shift our function to the left by 45 degrees, but also shift all my y values up by two. So the starting point, because we're going to the left by 45 degrees is gonna be at negative 45 degrees. However, because I have to shift two units up, my starting point is going to be at negative 45 and positive two. So at 90 and one, again, shift 45 degrees, which takes us to 45 and add two onto one, which is three. Same thing with 180, it'll take us to 135, we've moved to the left and we go up to two, which takes us over here. And 270 move to the left 45 degrees, which takes us to 225, and then move up by two, which takes us to one. So our graph would look like this. And that would be our transform graph. So it'd be g of x is equal to x plus 45 plus two. So again, my domain is always going to be x e r my domain is going to be yer and there's always going to be restrictions with sinusoidal functions remember to put your highest number on the right in this case it is three that's my highest y value and my lowest y value is one so y has to be bigger than or equal to one but less than or equal to three now my equation of the axis is given to me by my d value which is two. So my equation of the axis y is equal to two. My amplitude is still one because I'm one unit away from the axis of symmetry from my highest and lowest point. And my period is still going to be 360 degrees. So now, example four, we have the graph of f of x equal to sine of x has been translated 30 units, 30 degrees right and four units up. We want to write the new equation. So I'm going to have f of x is equal to sine, and because I'm shifting to the right, I'm going to have x minus 30 degrees. And because I'm going up by four, it's going to be plus four. <clears throat> Okay. 
For number five, it wants me to explain the transformations given the graph. So if you look at this graph, f of x, the green line, is our regular sine function, and g of x is our transformed function. So we're going to have to identify a couple of things. So let's identify what our axis of symmetry is, which I believe is over here, which is x is equal to negative 4. So my horizontal translation, so remember with sine x, it always starts at the axis of symmetry. So we're going to be focusing on this point over here. Actually, it looks more like this point right here. So how many units did it have to move in order for it to start in the middle? So our original function starts at 0, 0. Our new function would start at 180 and negative 4. So our horizontal translation is 180 degrees to the right. So now my vertical translation is how many units up or down did I move? So we're going to take this 180 over here because it's at the axis, and we're going to see how many units down we move. One, two, three, four. So our vertical translation is four units down. So now my equation would be g of x is equal to sine times x minus 180 plus minus 4. Now, if we have, let's say, an a value such as y f of x is equal to 2 times sine x plus 3, all this is doing is multiplying my y values by 2, okay, because my amplitude is increasing. So what this would look like in terms of a mapping notation, so we have our normal points x and y. Our x's don't change because sine x is by itself. However, I'm multiplying my y values by 2 and adding 3 as well. So our starting point for sine x is 0 and 0. So what we're going to do to figure out our new point is plug in 0 for x and 0 for y. So. If we plug in 0 for x, because nothing is being done to the x values, it still remains 0. Now, in order to figure out my new y value, I need to plug in 0 for y, because that is our original y value. So it's going to be 2 times 0 plus 3, which gives me 0 plus 3, which gives me 3. So my new point, my new starting point is going to be 0 and 3. Now, the next point is going to be 90 and 1. So again, nothing is being done to my x's, so 90 remains 90. Now I'm going to plug in my y value of 1 to 2y plus 3. So I'm going to get 2 times 1 plus 3, which gives me 2 plus 3, which is 5, which means my second new point is going to be at 90 degrees with a y value of 5. And you're going to keep going and going and going with that for the next three. So if I ask you, so I'm going to write an example. Write an equation. Where f of x is equal to sine x is translated two units down 30 degrees right and has a vertical stretch of three. 
So we're going to start off with our regular general equation. So f of x is equal to a sine of x minus c plus d. Actually, I may have gotten that mixed, mixed up. No, it's c plus d. That's good. So we know our d is going to be negative 2 because it's going to units down. Our c is 30 degrees to the right, which means my bracket is going to be x minus 30. And my vertical stretch, which is my a, is going to be 3. So therefore, my equation is going to be f of x is equal to 3 times sine of x minus 30 degrees minus 2. So this isn't too confusing, hopefully, as it's the same idea as, as quadratic transformations, and except we're using trigonometry. So hopefully this is fine. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me and just ask me freely.